Hello and welcome to my second tutorial for AdventureCraft. In this tutorial, we'll be covering mob spawners, triggers, and trigger doors. With these items, you will be able to create customizable arenas for combat. First off, let's go over to the mob spawner. So, uh, first thing I need to do, activate debug mode so I can place the mob spawner. Place it. To be able to work with it, I'm going to need to right click on it with a cursor. This pops up this uh, simple GUI. Um, on the left here, we have all the various mobs that we're allowed to currently spawn with it. We're going to leave it with pigs for simplicity's sake. And on the right, there's various other options that we can set. For the moment, we're going to change the spawn count to one mob. We're going to then change the respawn delay down to as small as it's going to let us. 4.3 seconds there. And we're going to make it so it spawns on a timer. Uh, this means that when the mob spawns, he'll be, uh, when he gets killed, all the mobs for this mob spawner, um, after that time has elapsed, he will res they'll all respawn. Alright, so if I deactivate, I'm going to pick here, I kill him, one, two, three, four, and pick spawns. And as you can see, we can keep doing this forever, and it'll keep happening the same. Alright. So let's go on to something a little more sophisticated. We're going to do is triggers now. First off, change the mob spawner. Change the respawn delay to zero for simplicity. We're going to make it so it spawns on trigger here. Now we're going to need an actual trigger set up. So we're going to place three blocks right there. We're going to select the, uh, our mob spawner as the position. Let's add a couple more triggers. I'm going to right click on the triggers with the uh, cursor and then I'm going to press use current selection. Now make note, when I use current selection, all the blocks that are nearby will all be changed to the same selection as you can see up here. So that one there has that and this one also has 0, 065, negative 2 for both min and max. So this means when the player enters into these blocks, they'll send a signal to the mob spawner that the mob spawner can then use to decide to spawn or not. In this case, I am going to have, but and when I enter there, the mob will spawn and everything's good. So let's test that out. First off, I need to kill that pig. All right, you can see a new pig did not spawn right away, which is good. Now if I walk backwards, the second I walk into the mob, the trigger right there, the new pig spawned. So let's demonstrate that real quick again. Triggers right in front of me. If I walk slightly forward, mob spawns, and we can see we're inside the trigger area. Good. So now, let's go ahead and make something a little more sophisticated, where we have a locked door right over here. This door is going to be triggered by the mob spawner. As long as there's mobs up, the door is going to be closed. And that's how this is going to work. So I need to select the, uh, the trigger door. So we have all the uh, uh, door blocks here are uh, currently selected. We right click on the mob spawner. And what we're going to do is set trigger zero. And it's now set to these blocks. So now, let's kill the pig. Come this way. Enter the trigger area. You can see this door is now uh, closed. And the mob is up. If I come over here. Let's make sure we're facing the door. Kill the pig. Door unlocks. So now what if you want something more sophisticated where you have multiple mobs in a row? So I want to chain mob spawners, for example. So what we can do then is I need to activate debug mode again. We're going to put a mob spawner over here. We're going to change this mob spawner. It's going to spawn a slide, so something different. Change the spawn count to one. Respawn delay will be zero. And this time, instead of spawn on trigger, we're going to change it to spawn on detrigger. This means when, instead of uh, when it receives a trigger event, instead of when it receives a detrigger event, which means the trigger has been unapplied. So next, we're going to need to do is select the it with the cursor. So 
double click with the cursor to uh, set both our selection points to the uh, mob, new mob spawner. Right click on the old mob spawner and we're going to set trigger one set. This way, when the uh, pig spawns, the uh, other new mob spawner is going to get the on trigger event, but when the pig dies, it's going to get the uh, on trigger deactivated event. And this will actually then result in the slime spawning with them. So this way we can chain our mobs together. So let's test that out real quick. Go and trigger, trigger doors active, pigs up, kill pig, door opens, and we see a uh, we now have a slime here. So now, if we don't want the uh, the door to uh, open, we need to make sure we also set the door to be closed by the second mob spawner. Now, important thing to note about this is the trigger order matters. In this case, what's going to happen is, since on this first one, uh, trigger one is set to go to the mob spawner and trigger zero is set to go to the door, um, it's actually going to open the door first before the other one spawns, which means it's the uh, it's going to door is going to rapidly open and close. So to prevent that, what we're going to do now is trigger zero. When we uh, unset it, it actually sets our current selection to what it was previously set to. So if we look over there, we'll see that the door is selected. And now we're going to set to trigger two. So this way we make sure that the door will uh, try to unlock after the other mob spawner has been triggered. This way it ensures the other mob spawner has a chance to be able to uh, lock, keep the door locked. So now if we test this out, go here, door uh, is now locked, pig is up, and look at that, slime's there, slime dies, door uh, opens. So now, another thing that we can do with this is often we're going to want to be able to give uh, keys as the items that drop. So it's fairly simple, we can just right click on here. There's currently two types of keys that we can draw. Uh, we can have a drop a key, we can have a drop a heart container, and we can also have a drop a boss key. The boss key is the silver key, um, the other other keys, um, the gold key. Um, you can have it used either what or you want. It doesn't really matter. Um, there's the player doesn't actually uh, know anything besides they're called gold key and seal silver key, so you can use them for whatever you want. Let's have it drop a heart container. Alright. One thing to note is by the way, it's, this is not dropped an item. So what we expect is we're going to expect to see that change here in a second. So let me do it again. All right, pigs is up, slime is up, kill that, heart container drops, pick up heart container. Now to note, when I come over here, right click on here, it says has dropped an item. So this means that it won't drop any new item because it's already dropped one. So we can test that real quick just to verify that. Uh, die pig and slime and slime is dead and no new heart container drops. This prevents the player from just farming the items for limited items like heart containers and keys which you want to not just dole out willy nilly to the player. So Now if, if you're testing this a lot you need to be able to reset it. So what you can do as we can see over here it says has dropped an item. What we're going to do is Without that screen up, we press F6, it resets all the blocks, and it now says has not dropped an item. This means if we do it again, we're going to get another heart container. Oh, kill pig, kill slime, and heart container. And voila, we now have five hearts from those two hearts. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, I'll be covering the more advanced trigger blocks, uh, both trigger inverters, memory, and showing you how you can do a few tricks with them. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy this tutorial.